Hey, this is P-Day, Turner Executive Producer and host of the Break It Down show with today's episode featuring my man Vito Pelicano, who is the producer of the web series called Search for Aliveness. Now, we've had on uh, the host of this, Chad Gabriel, before talking about how they go out into the world looking for what aliveness is, studying it, and bringing back us these incredible shows that illustrate it. You can watch these things simply by going to YouTube and typing search for aliveness and definitely subscribe to their channel. These are wonderful little bits of humanity in a time when there's so much not that and there's so much struggle and strife that we see represented. Here are folks putting together fantastic things. Now, this is the thing that's kind of crazy to me. This is a project that they fund internally at their company they work at. Their company is called Tuthill. You can go to tuthill.com and you can watch all kinds of things about their culture and everything else. And, and their 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 boss, the guy who owns it, the guy whose name is on the building is Jay Tuthill. And I'm hoping that we can get him on the show. And his approach to how he runs his company bleeds all the way down to the bottom where you have guys like Chad and Vito and they're creating these things and you hear Jay's mentorship, not just on business, but on community, on life and how he invests in people trying to truly become alive and and live their best life. I I think this is going to be a fantastic episode. We get so many things that we cover that are hard and complex. Here today, we're going to slow down and enjoy some of the sweetness of life and understand how to better get to that ourselves. And I think this is enormously valuable. So uh, go with me on this journey if you would. Now listen, if you're new to the show, let me tell you this. We have all kinds of guests. We have screenwriters, musicians, combat warriors, authors, PhDs talking about completely fascinating conversations. We have so many different things. We've got members of Congress from the U.S. We've had people running for office in other countries. You will find out that we sort of in our own way search for aliveness and we look for things that enrich life and we illustrate that. So we're, we're on common paths and I hope you continue to go on this joy, joyful ride with us. Subscribe. That's the best way. When, when here's, here's the thing. When I interact with you and you're like, hey, tell me when the next show is coming out, I'm going to say to you, please subscribe. Just do that because we will. We'll t- <laughs> I'll engage with you. I can't tell the thousands of you, hey, the show's out. I do that by publishing it. And if you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's Apple Podcasts, YouTube, uh, BreakItDownShow.com, you will get notified when that happens. And that would be a big help to me. And as always, subscribing is a great way to help support the show. Our other thing I always say, and you guys know it's coming, save the brave, save the brave.org. What we do every day is help save veteran lives. We take them deep sea fishing, we build community around them, and they start to get a little bit better. It's true, it works, and if that's something that you're passionate about, we can use your help, your time, your money, your attention, even if you have a special capacity, even if you just like, hey, at your golf event, let me drive things around. I'm in Southern California, I'll come down and I'll run two hours worth of errands for you. Do you know how valuable that is to a charity? Oh my God. Well, listen, enough about that. Here comes Vito Pelicano. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this East. This is Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morata. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hey, this is Vito Pelicano, and I'm with the Break It Down Show. Yeah, Vito Pelicano is working on a project called The Search for Aliveness. I guess you would call it a, what, what, Vito, a web series that you and Chad Gabriel are doing with uh, Tuthill. And, of course, we've, we've got to mention uh, Magda because she's part of the project as well. We don't want to leave her out, Eric and Magda. Um, you guys have been doing this for a while because Chad and I talked about it like just as you guys were. You had a few in the can, but nothing was really launched yet. What have what has transpired over the last little more than a year since you guys have been on this journey? Well, we released seven episodes and we're able to go to um, Mexico and in Africa, Zambia, um, for two of our worldly explorations. Um, but yeah, seven episodes so far, and we're just getting started to start filming season two. Nice. Okay, so what's in store for us for season two? Well, so we cast our nine out wide, right? We went and our goal was to search the world and and not just get the um, Illinois perspective of aliveness, just get different cultures, races, beliefs, lifestyles, all that good stuff, and different perspectives regarding aliveness. So we're going to, we're going to go for Japan this year. 
Okay. Um, we're also going to bring it internal for Tuthill. We're a manufacturing company, and we have these awesome foundational markets, right, that um, are really for human life. So we're going to try to grab a customer of ours to interview him or her uh, regarding what they do to feel alive and what they promote out into the world. Yeah. So, no, that's interesting. Yeah. Tell, so tell us yeah. first off where people can find the work because there is quite a bit there and I want to make sure folks can go out and check it out on, on YouTube or wherever it is. And so the, the easiest way would be going to the website, the search for aliveness.com. Okay. And that just embeds all our YouTube videos each, each episode. If they want, which we would love is to go to Facebook and like and follow us. We also put the episodes out there. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be putting the episodes on IGTV this year. We're going to re-release the first seven starting at the end of this month, um, putting those out on IGTV. Nice. Y- yeah, and YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you just search for The Search for Aliveness, and you'll see our channel. Tell us what The Search for Aliveness is. What What is the concept? And then I want you to back that question up with how has it evolved from where when you guys were packing your bags up in Illinois, getting ready to go to Africa and Mexico and all that stuff. How has it evolved? So what was the search for aliveness and what is it today? Well, it's all it, it's always been where we internally at Tudhill, um, it starts with Jay Tudhill, the owner. He was always he has this belief in aliveness, which aliveness for us is, you know, the simplest form would be living the life you were meant to live. Right. I mean, okay. I'm sure your listeners and you've heard that all before. Right. But it's really diving deep into being being the person you were meant to be. And um, he really he really um, believes in humanity and his employees. And internally, we've been doing retreats and, and sessions and all these things to get employees to figure that out, too. And one of the great things about it is, um, say an employee wants to, um, as Jay put it, for example, um, wants to write children books, right? Children books has nothing to do with manufacturing, but Todd Hill as a company will help them live that life so if they end up leaving the company and becoming a, a writer then we all it's it's fantastic so it's not like uh we're trying to pigeonhole anybody into their positions or anything like that we really believe strongly to live that life you want to live so internally that's how it's been and we've been doing that gosh close to 15 years now mm-hmm. and when we started when chad um and i went into this new department called wake the world which is our purpose um, we were asked to come up with a project to go outside of, of Tuthill, right? Mm. And, and explore outside what aliveness is. And, and I was asked to come up with different ways. And since I did a documentary in the past for my brother, who's a veteran, a veteran artist, and I really loved getting into film and figuring that stuff out. I said, let's do a documentary series. And thankfully they said, yes. And, and that's how that got started. Um, I'll be damned. So they said, we, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which which could you, I mean, think of that. It's a, we're a manufacturing company going out and asking people what they do to feel alive just to inspire other people to live the best life they can. How awesome is that, right? It, it's, it's incredibly awesome. And, and like any great project, it's impossible. That is not supposed to happen. Jay Tuthill is not supposed to say, hey, I, I don't know what it costs to fly three people over Africa to Mexico, all over the States to grab these stories. Um, but I can tell you it's more than $100,000. You know, I mean, like in, oh. in real cost, <laughs> you know? Right. Oh, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but yeah, you're, you're hitting pretty close. It's, uh, the oh, yeah. and everything else. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, it's a big, it's a big investment. It's a big it's investment. A big investment. That, right. Right. And you're a manufacturing the, um, you know, company. That's why we're on the... You're a manufacturing right. company. Why right. on earth is he doing it? I mean, like why spend six figures, you know, not, not to mention that he's got, what is, is I'm assuming that all three of you are Tuthill employees. Now you guys not only are a cost center, but you're spending money <laughs> on the cost center project. So it's really expensive to, to do this. I mean, the, what causes Jay to want to do this project? Why does he believe in it so deeply that he's putting that much backing behind it? Simply put, he loves people. He loves humanity. He, lo- he loves to see the world live into its best potential. And, you know, he loves his employees. I mean, think about this. I mean, so Jay's doing this, right? He's coming from his profits. He's, he's investing. This. But think about the people that work. You know, we have 600 plus employees. Right. Each one of them participates in this document. They, without them, this wouldn't happen, right? Okay. So, I mean, there's a huge love that goes all the way around with everybody. And it's, 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 it's an awesome effort. It's an awesome movement. 
and we just hope it catches steam. And in the documentary, you know, so but back to your original question of um, the goal of it, the goal still stays the same of where we want to build a recipe for aliveness, which changed is how we're going to do it. So what we decided to do and what we're going to plan on launching this year too with season two is a web app application on the website, on our website where people could answer a few a series of questions and they'll gauge where they're, where um, they might have opportunities to grow in the categories that we feel are of, surround the lives right and then uh -huh. we're going to give them tips on how to better those areas and we'll also show clips from past episodes that that touch those areas of liveness right okay okay so you're able to take some of the things you've learned along the way and start to create step stones for people to to match that kind of level of aliveness is that am i saying this right yeah yeah so you know with the five categories that's the other thing that changed mm. um connection and and um sachet we called it which was a full realm of emotions okay. those the wordings of those two have changed it's now connection has become belonging right and sachet because it was an acronym and it was hard to explain um to general public without having that knowledge involved in it is emotional awareness which we feel encompasses it even more whole um but it, the others are purpose um present engaged what did I say? Connection, <laughs> or I mean, belonging. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I got myself tongue tied. I apologize. <laughs> Let me start over. Purpose, uh -huh. present, engaged, belonging, energy, and emotional awareness. So those are the five areas that we, as we we're out and exploring, we we look at and ask our our, our interviews, uh, interview candidates um, about. Right. And then we try to look for if anything else pops up while we're interviewing them, that might be a separate category right. or might be something that we um, attach to those categories. Like authenticity came out huge. Right. And authenticity for us. And I, I feel like it. And from what I've heard from our, we, our, our team is it falls in like being present, and engaged, right. Being, being you being right. in the moment. Okay. We'll talk about energy. I mean, everybody talks, you know, these, these things can all be very buzzwordy and, and I don't want to sell your project short by not getting into that, but you say energy. No. I don't know what that means. Tell me what that means. Okay. So for us, it, it's um, not just energy of it's body, mind, and soul, right? So it's, it's energy as in keeping fit physically, right? Okay. It's energy of um, your mental energy, being able to wake up in the morning and be on path and having that energy, that mental, mental capability. So energy encompasses a lot of different aspects of it. So it's not just like um, electricity or, or something like that. Right. It's, it, it encompasses a full body, mind, and soul to give you that energy that you need to accomplish those goals that you might have set up. All right. Well, no, I, I can I can appreciate that. And then let's just push this a little bit further because, again, like you guys say purpose, but you know, how do you know when you have the correct purpose? it's easy to you, like you we talking before the show about your path to getting to becoming a, a documentarian you know you, you've sort of done it before with your brother but that's not a path anybody would say this is how you become a documentarian but you clearly know your purpose now talk to me about purpose so purpose is a real tough one i mean I'm, so when we when we interviewed tim kelly who is a he's a, a thought leader on that subject mm -hmm. you know a purpose could be as if you're a parent, right? Raising your kid is your purpose, but it's actually more than that because like Tim says, what happens when your kids leave home Yeah, and a lot of retirees and stuff like that fall short of that. Like the kids are gone. They're good. They're healthy. They're gone. Right. You did your job. What am I doing now? So purpose yeah. is, is a really important aspect of aliveness. And it's not something that everybody has clarity on including myself you know you, you said documentarian but i'm still on a journey to find mine i'm a little bit more clear yeah. in the sense that um now that listening to tim kelly and practicing some of the things in his book and stuff like that um a purpose usually involves helping somebody else right it's not it's not it's not just about yourself or like learning a language or anything like that it usually involves helping somebody else so part of the, my purpose line or the, whatever you want to talk about or how you want to say it is I enjoy sharing people's stories, right? Okay. Now I need to fine tune that to a more of a, a niche, right? Is it, is it, is it small businesses? Is it, is it, is it, is it the large companies? Is it individual people? You know, like find what that really that sweet spot that I enjoy mm -hmm. doing and then live into that. So 
it's a journey and it's, it's going to, it, most people have it close and they, they know what it is. They can feel it inside. If they say something out loud, they'll feel it in their body that it's something that they really enjoy doing and really are driven to do in service of another. Yeah. But not, then you have to find, fine tune what exactly you could do with the talents that you have to move forward on that purpose. So it sounds like purpose can evolve over time like where you can accomplish a phase or a step in your purpose path, but then, you know, you're looking for the next thing that you're going to do as you go down whatever that path or process is. Is that fair? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's totally fair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you know, first off, let's just say this, uh, we push really hard here on charity and, I hope that we're annoying because if we're not, then I'm not doing it hard enough because I want adults to realize whatever you have, you know, either you're, you're in two positions, either you're in a position where you need some charity and some help and you should get used to that and get the help so that you can graduate up to the point where you have help to give, whether it's time, money, attention, presence, support, you know, there's a lot of ways to, you know, to, to do something, to donate your time or your capacity. So we push really hard on that because I, I do. It is vital. No one goes and does charity and says, "Man, this is horrible. I feel terrible about myself. I've made no difference today." <laughs> you know, it's like those aren't those aren't the and values. You're totally you know? right. Everything you right and everything you said is it touches on it, and it's so important. And and that at that high level, it is of service to others, right? Right. Um, and, and you know, like you said, but you by helping yourself, getting getting. Oh my God, that's another huge one. And um, Megan, our last episode, Megan Murphy, who's uh, editor at Good Housekeeping, she was the last person we interviewed. She talked strongly about um, moms, stay-at-home moms specifically, mm -hmm. who are sometimes afraid to ask for that help, right? Because mm -hmm. they feel like it's a sign of um, not being strong, right? right? Where it's actually the quite opposite. You be strong and have the courage to ask for help. And it is important to do that, to boost yourself up because as soon as you get that, as you just said, you'll be able to help others. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, is when you look at things like charity and, and service, uh, this just in veto, it ain't supposed to be easy. If it was easy, the folks who needed the help would just do it them fuck themselves. You know, they would just do it. So, yeah. right. You know, charity, like if it feels like, oh, I don't want to get up early on the Saturday morning to go sit and listen to someone talk about, you know, guide dogs, you know, and 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 right. go and like uh, drive an hour each way. But that's part of it. That's part of the thing. Like you get up, you go do it because now you're in the gym. You're in like the service gym and you're getting you're working your back and you're working your quads and you get done. And you're like, you know, I'm glad I did that. And, and sometimes it's wonderful and it pays immediate dividends, but you're always, you're always putting stuff in the bank. And it's such a, it's such a in dense, enriching event where you're supporting someone who's doing something special. You're getting something from that. They're getting something from that. All the people there, everybody is doing something in service. And you're right. Having that purpose locked down, it's a, it's an amplifier to anything anyone does in life. And I can't, I can't encourage people enough to do things in service constantly. Constantly. Yeah. 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 It's, that's another thing, you know, just within, within reason, right. You don't want to overdo it because you can overdo it and, and burn yourself out, but yeah, constantly have that in the back of your mind, to serve others. And you could do it from, you know, there's all sorts of ways to do it. I mean, as simply as writing a check, or from opening a door to a person and, you know, this always in service or something of others to help out yeah. could, could be that. Um, I don't suggest a check only because I've been through that route and I, I know I, I, well, for instance, for Africa, right. Um, while we were there, we met a blind girl who, um, yeah, I don't want to ruin the story. I would love for people to watch the episode, but basically she needed some help. Right. And, right. um, the only way to help her being where I lived in the States was to, for, to give money, to get her into a school, a school for a blind. Cause right. she was 16 with a, you know, like a fourth or fifth grade education. That's that didn't even know how to um, count really. So that, you know, just by doing that and, and helping her in that regard does make me feel better. And I know that it's making her feel better. I get letters constantly from the people that are guard being their guardians about sure. her and stuff like that. But, to be in person and to help one on one or one with a group is is to me a more fulfilling. I mean, I still 
I'm still going to help her out as much as I can. You know what I mean? Right. For as long as I can. But that person to person, that connection of being with somebody, I think that that's, that's a lot more fulfilling. We're talking with Vito Pelicano. You guys should definitely go check out their series. You can go to the search for aliveness.com or you can go to their Facebook page. They're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. And just, it's really neat. These interviews these guys do is, and they, and they start to illustrate what aliveness is. I, I, I look, I love talking to Chad and I, you know, I have a real negative impression of corporate America, but, but I'll be damned. You guys over at Tuthill, and I, I'm saying this honestly, um, it's impressive the culture you guys have created and nurtured where where everybody's excited you, you know you've worked there 12 plus years chad is such a fan of working there they just to you know, talk about liveness if you love your job like that how how productive are the people at Tata? you guys must produce the hell out of stuff yeah i mean we're, i mean everybody um you know, it's part of our core is to always reflect on ourselves at Tut Hill, right? And always better ourselves. I mean, part of a, a line that's taken from our, you know, how vision, mission, value brand that people have, corporates have, we call it our compass, right? A line in there is there to make better. And it's not just there to make better manufacturing and pump or whatever it is too. It's there to make better for yourself. I mean, it's always about yourself and your job. And like I said earlier in this, in this interview, and if, if it comes to be that this isn't what you, your purpose is or your plan in life, you know, Todd Hill will support you to get to that next level of your life. You know, yeah. so it's, we, we strongly believe in our people. And um, I hope, you know, the employees that are listening that may have doubts know that, you know, they're cared about and we, we, we love them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. We're there for them. So, well, you know, it's, yeah. um, well, look, look, let's also say this too. I deal a lot in culture, especially at the corporate level, you know, to, to try to understand it. And one of the tests, you guys have already passed it. You know, when when Jay is creating this culture and he's like, hey, let's work on these things. I need to be able to, as the outsider, I need to be able to find it. And, and I'm finding a positive energy. You're talking about your compass. These, these are concepts that you know, and you're clearly mentored and guided to like, we, uh, we're we not just saying this. This is not just a poster on the wall. You know, whoever your boss is, I guess Chad in this case, he's like, I need you to yeah. understand what purpose is. Go read this book. Let's talk about, you know, and you spend time on the things that matter, all of a sudden, guess what, Vito? Those things matter. And I hear, I hear it in the words that you're saying that your, co- your company really does value these things, and that's why the culture is working. Because you can say at, in, at every corporation they have these, these cultural things, but if it's not practiced, if it's not measured, if it's not celebrated, th- then it, it's not reliably going to be there. You might get lucky, but obviously you guys have cracked the code on, on that part of the culture, and I love hearing about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and, you know, going back to what you said too, is now think about our purpose, our purpose, wake the world. It's a huge monstrous, ginormous thing, right? It's yeah. not, um, um, you know, it's a, a simplified, um, purpose driven. It's, it's, it's so wide, but what we did and that is really to the core is this, this term aliveness, right? And it's, and, you know, think about, like you said, corporate American stuff. And I don't know, um, I've only been at Tuttle. <laughs> so I don't know about other corporations, but I do know from people that I talk to that they can't believe that a company would create time for their employees to develop themselves personally yeah. versus just the task or the, or the skill that they have for the job, so right. But to about, develop themselves yeah. personally. Right. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, that's totally, totally cool. And, you know, <laughs> you don't feel guilty about taking that time for yourself to really develop that, you know, if you need them few minutes to sit there and work with one of the coaches that we have we have full-time coaches life coaches that uh, work at Tuthill That's to work great. with them to develop yourself i mean we we it's it's those resources are there for, for whoever wants them right yeah and again like you're really truly it seems like Tuthill really invests in its people in a way gosh it sounds like an infomercial for Tuthill and i think i'm going to apply for a job here in a minute but <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it's infectious. You know, you can see how it works, and 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 the fact that again, old man Tuthill is spending a lot of his own money investing in this concept of aliveness, and you know, it's not like, well, let's see how it goes. Let's do two episodes. He invested in seven episodes, and now you guys are working on season two, and and it seems like you know, even if you're not like getting all of your your goals and everything and hopes accomplished, and I'm not saying you're not, you know, 
you guys are stretching. You're going for bigger things now in season two, and 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 who knows where this ends up? It's it's such a it's such a righteous quest, and I I love it. Right, and uh, you know, and I and set myself up personally for the goals of the documentary because when I when I said it out loud and I got approved for the project, I'm thinking to myself, oh oh yeah, uh oh now I gave myself a problem. Like? Right, I gave myself a monster. What 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 does success look like to me? Right, and then I thought. For me personally, if I could affect just a few people that would never n- known about um, the term aliveness or never spent that time to think about themselves, if I could just change a few people's hearts or minds to think about that, mm-hmm. to me, that's a success, right? And, right. And, and we've done that. We've done quite more than that. But, you know, I was like, you know, I, I held myself not at, not at a, um, not a lower standard by any means, but at a at a more comfortable feel to get myself away from that fear of failure. Right. Mm, so, and, yeah. and thankfully, like I said, with this company, we don't look at failure as bad. We look at it as an opportunity, mm-hmm. right. As an opportunity to grow and become better. Okay. You know, yeah. and I, I got to say, I'm, I don't know if you could tell by my tone. I'm not a corporate guy by means. And if you looked at me, you would be like, you work for corporate, <laughs> but I have a strong BS meter. Yeah. You know, I kind of, I kind of know that from people I've grown up with and where I've grown up. I, I haven't, and if I didn't believe in what Jay was trying to do, I, I wouldn't be a stand for it. I'd be, I'd be, I'd hop and go. Right. You know what I mean? I strongly believe in everything that he has to say. And like you said, this, I know this sounds like a ton of information, but it really is at the core of why this project exists. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I love it. I mean, I, I think what you guys are doing is going to make a difference. And it'll continue to make a difference. And, you know, the people here's the other thing is as you are doing this project, you're also giving back to other people that are, you know, have found their purpose. And, you know, they found what alive this means for them. And and they get to have a little celebration, too. It gets to be OK to say, right. hey, what you're doing is special. And uh, we want to celebrate it. That's it's neat to be able to pass that gift along to someone else. And, you know, we all have our moments of doubt and you're like, oh, I'm terrible at this. And, you know, but here comes here comes the guys from Tut Hill saying, hey, what you're doing is incredible. Can we talk to you for an hour? You know, or whatever it is. I, I, I love that. aspect. Right. What? Yeah. And then when you talk about that doubt and that fear, right, uh-huh. we have an episode of regarding that with our, our uh, say yes episode was where we went skydiving for the first time. Yeah. And it was facing a, you know, a fear of physical, but it was also emotional and everything, you know, all the emotions that ran through it. But, you know, um, Mike Semenoff and Marsha Miller, who um, he works for GoPro, what they said was say yes to those things that scare you, right? Because yeah. you don't know what's going to come out of them in the end. And you, <laughs> you seriously should do that. We were For having reason. This... Like, don't jump in a... Yeah. <laughs> we were having this conversation yesterday with uh, Scott Husing, who's a co-producer, a co-host on the show and everything. And he's like, we should go get OJ. And I'm like, that terrifies the hell out of me. I want no part of that. <laughs> and so, But now I know like, like that might be an area for growth. And I still may not say yes to OJ because there's a lot of problems with that. But but those right. are the kind of opportunities I am looking for. It's like what makes me so uncomfortable that I'm not sure, you know, what the outcome will be. And I recoil from it. And I, I push myself towards those things now. I'm not saying that we're going to go grab OJ because I, I find him to be a, you know, horrible person. But I bet if I talked to him, my opinion would change. And I would have a different understanding yeah. of who he was. And despite him being a homicidal, you know, crazy person, you know, I, I would have to reckon with the fact that there he is in front of me talking to me like a regular human. And maybe he's reformed. Maybe he's rehabilitated. I don't know. Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. There he is in front of me talking to me like a regular human. And maybe he's reformed. Maybe he's rehabilitated. I don't know. Right. And, you know, with so with that being brought up, so back to Megan on the on episode seven, yeah, she talked about finding the positive in negative situations. You know, at, um, at night she does things with her kids about the highlight. What's the best part of the day? She's always trying to find positivity, even if there's negative mm-hmm. involved, right? Mm-hmm. She talked about her, her father passing. I know as not quite the equivalent of, of a murderer, but you know, her father passed of cancer and she, instead of being distraught and of which she was, you know, grief is there, 
but the positive that she found in there is to look for the good and see the good in it that she was able to spend that time with her father and really learn and grow from him on what his legacy wants to be and what and clearly what her legacy will become right, right. because she had that time with him before he passed because he you know fathers could i could die tomorrow right and my kids wouldn't have that time so she looked for the positive inside that negative part of her life yeah and if you're able to find some positives even in the negative things you know it's an opportunity to grow it's an opportunity to meet someone or whatever you know it gets a little less scary and you do more things and you and you again continue to grow and if you haven't found aliveness you're at least working on finding it you know like that that chase is something you know if you're chasing aliveness you're you're getting better as a person as you as you get better at chasing it right and and it's a good thing right so even if you, um, like you said, the interview OJ, well, you're interviewing him not in a negative light. You're interviewing to try to find that positive. So by pulling that out, you know, what if that interview went in a way that where um, you changed OJ's mindset or whatever, something might be there where you caused a positive yeah. light in, in that man's life. You know what I mean? It, it could happen. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. And you might also find out that he's working with severe mental incapacity from playing football. I mean, we know that CTE riddles football players' brains. Why would we assume that his brain operates normally? You know, people don't normally kill people. Huh. And and so you might become a little more empathetic and, and compassionate towards the fact that, you know, look, it doesn't absolve him of his crime, but you can at least say, you know, this guy's no. got a brain that's working at 20% power, yeah. and I don't know that I would do a whole lot better. You know, I, I've, I've right. talked to and, boxers. And- yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to even say that with boxers and other sports too. But and and he, by you finding that out and knowing that he's working on it, that's a positive. If he was sitting here with no regrets and no, no right. um, consideration for others and anything like that, then you know, it's a whole other level. But he, who, who knows what you might find out with him? Yeah, I would love to interview Mike Tyson if he's listening. I love that interview, Mike Tyson. <laughs> well, Mike's get a book. Mike's Mike does talk. He talks all the. I would say he talks for a living now. So he for sure is gettable. It's just a matter of of getting in front of him. Yeah, let's talk about that too. So Mike Tyson, who else would be interesting to you, or or what kind of person, even if you don't know who they are, what kind of person would you want to talk to? What kind? Oh, so I, I still would love to um, talk with people in the in the religious spectrum, like a Buddhist monk or a priest or something like that, to get their perspective. Mike Tyson to get his perspective. You know, he um, from what I follow on him because I'm a fan. Um, he's learning, growing, and and he's giving back to others. And I would love to hear his story, you know, and, and dive deeper into that aspect of his life versus what you always hear about just boxing, right? Um, God, if I could just make whew. I, that's a that's a hard question because I think about it often, but I can never land on a person. But I would just somebody that I I know that um, well. There's two people: somebody completely lacking or needing of opportunity in all aspects, and that's why we we said we want to also in, um, interview regular people, just a regular Joe, right? Uh, right. You and me, right? Um, not 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 a Mike Tyson figure, and get those those spots where there is room to grow and learn from them. But then I also want to. I want to speak to the most alive person that somebody could ever think of. Right. And if uh, your listeners want to go to my contact page on search for aliveness and give me somebody that they, they think is the most alive person in the world that they would love to hear from. I'd love to get that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There's the big, uh, the big call. How about you? Who would you, who, who would you love to hear from? Um, okay. So this is actually everything. a pretty good question. Cause I want to do something similar to what you guys are doing. It's a different project. It'd be a you know a documentary type series, but I'm working on provisioning it now. Basically, what would happen is is I would get in a car and I would drive around the, the big western states. Uh, I wouldn't hit New Mexico or South Dakota, not for any any reason other than you know just time and money, you know. But um, all the yeah. rest, and not Alaska, not Hawaii. So those four states excluded, I would get as far east as Arkansas and I would do interviews, hopefully two interviews a day in 20 different locations. And I would like to go to towns that are primarily less than a hundred thousand people, you know, with a couple of exceptions. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And just talk to regular folks. And, and this is my, I haven't figured out a better way to explain this, but this is a very good way to explain it because people are not in a basket of deplorable people. They're regular people. 
And it's not a political thing. It's just to say, look, people have real lives. They have real concerns. They have real excitements. They have things they're proud of. They have things they're scared of. And to, to assume that who they are is something terrible is wrong. You know, we, we can do a lot better job of knowing who each other are. So the, it would be called the story of us, and it would be you dot s, sort of a double meaning in that it illustrates yeah. – who we are as a nation, but who we are individually, you know, and these, these people, they all matter, whether they're on an Indian reservation or they're Warren Buffett and anybody in between, you know, they're all people with, with real lives, real stories. And, and when we, when we get too big, when we scope out too far and you just see the the globe, you know, you say, that's the U S right there. You don't know anything about it, you know? And so that, that's sort of what I would like to do is to go out and illustrate who the heck we are from the ground. Cause I'm a ground truth guy, you know, from the ground and, and get a sense for, you know, what keeps, what keeps you up at night, Vito, like to ask the people that question, you know, what, what's the government done for you lately? That kind of thing. And then you find out who they are. Yeah. Right. And that's a, that's a fantastic project. Wow. That's awesome. And that's a, that's a monster on pun itself too. And I wish you the best of luck on it. That's a, that I know you'll succeed too. Cause that's, that's phenomenal. I mean, and then I know you don't want to talk about politics and I don't either, <laughs> <laughs> but just to touch on it a little bit, um, you're, I mean, to get those both sides perspectives and showing that it doesn't matter that, that little, um, box you check, you're still a human being with feelings and, and there's a lot of similarities between you and an individual you might call deplorable, right? Yeah. 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 Or, or vice versa. Right. And there's, and just getting past those barriers and, showing up the way um, we're, we're supposed to be authentic instead of by labeling ourselves as a, this political party, that political party or not. I mean, it's, it's huge. And it, I, I love that idea of that project because, yeah. you know, you can, and if you, what, if you were going to political realm, you can even have fun with it and say, I talked to this person, guess what, 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 uh, <laughs> what party they, they are in. You know what I mean? You'll see that they might, say a left or right and they'll see that it's a divide there and you might see something where it doesn't matter that that label didn't matter in the first place because they're just a human being with strong beliefs and and just need a little bit more understanding I, you know absolutely I mean? and I, I think so i've been asking this question recently of people that i talked to um i would submit that the u.s is more as a population is more of a bell curve you know with a high peak in the middle and two tails on each side but what's presented you know, through media and through social media is a bimodal or, or a multimodal population. And that's just not the case. You know, most of us, um, look, here's what I've learned from being around the world, all kinds of places. Most people hate cancer. Most people love their kids. They want a better opportunity for their kid. You know, they're afraid of uncertainty. And th- these things are universal values that if you focus your attention on that and you slow down, oftentimes the, the thing that the person needs help with the most is directly in front of them. And I'm going to give you an example. For a long time for me, and I know personally right now it's another veteran, and I'm a veteran as well, I wasn't able to get over the hump to pay my registration. And that problem only gets more expensive and so only more impossible for me to solve. Like a simple check right. of, say, $1,200 would have solved that problem for me, and I wouldn't have to drive around in fear of losing my car, having it towed. You know, because if my car gets towed, I'm never going to get it out because I also don't have the money to get it out of impound because I don't have the $1,200 right. to right. get it ready. Hey. You know? So here's a super yeah. tiny problem that I could probably go to someone within five miles of that person's house and say, can you cut a check for $1,200 to help a veteran get over a hump that he can't otherwise get over? And you know what that, you know what Jay Tudhill is going to say? Here's the check. Go help that guy out, you know, and it's over. And I'm not putting it on Jay, but I'm just saying there are yeah. so many people that would do that. It's not a problem where we need Congress to solve it. We can solve a lot of our problems ourselves as a community if we bother to be a community. Well, you just touched on a key word right there, community, right? Yeah. And that's that's huge. If you if we were living in a community and we were living into our into aliveness and just that over you know, of being a good person, a good human being. Yeah. And not that party or line and all that kind of stuff, you, you know, government would wouldn't wouldn't be much needed, you know? Because we'd self govern ourselves and yeah, and, and take care of those issues and problems ourselves, you know. And and you know, back to what you said about Jay Conacheck, I got to say this though, 
I can't speak for him about cutting that check, but I know if there was a check, there would be an opportunity for you to grow as a person involved with it. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. just be, here's your money. It'd hey, be, here's you know your what? money, but what are you doing? I, I think, what do you want to do in your life? And what do you, <laughs> there'd yeah. be a lot more questions. Than this. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, that, I mean, that's fair. Like, you know, you, you're like, if you need, cause here's the God's honest truth, right? At the time when I needed that, whatever they call it, $1,200. And I don't know what the amount of money was, but it was more than I could put together in one time. Um, I needed more help than just the twelve hundred dollars, you know. I, I needed and, I needed a mentor. Typically, that's there. Yeah, I needed yeah. these other things, and actually needed more than twelve hundred dollars. That was just that problem. But these are things that can mm-hmm. be solved. And then someone like Jay now has partnered with me, and he's mentoring me, and he's like, "Hey, let's get you connected to people. Let's get you know. Here, if these are your problems, dude, these are easy problems to solve. We're going to work on them one at a time. Let's get you here. Let's get you, you know." And then all of a sudden, you've taken this person that is going in the completely wrong direction, desperate, maybe kill themselves. And now all of a sudden, like two years later, and, I, and we're no longer talking about me specifically, but two years later, this person is thriving and they're giving back and they're finding that next person who needs help. I mean, it's that fast. Two right. years. And it's, it's contagious. It's yeah. contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you get mm-hmm. that kind of help, you get that check, you're not going to be like, well... I'm done helping. You're going to be like, someone helped me when I needed it desperately. And I'm so grateful. Let me give you help. And you're going to, you know, you're going to not only pay it forward, but you're also going to, you know, overpay back you know, because you're so grateful. It's, it's a really neat thing to right. be able to do that. Yeah. It, it is. It is. It's a, it's a really neat thing. Um, back to your, um, the, there was something you said and it made me, uh, and I had to go search it up so I could get the right words verbatim. But a thing at Tudhill that I just was, um, because they're constantly working on terms and things and, and, and models to work with to become more alive and to work together as teams. The Awaken You, you know, we call it the Awaken You team. Um, they're the life coaches and the people that are helping personal development, right? That's a, a team at Tall Hill solely for that purpose, to develop the individual, right? Right. Well, they came up with a term called uncommon conflict. And I mean, think about this in your party lines and, and, and government day, right? The definition of that that they have come up with is a celebration of diverse perspectives that bonds like-hearted teams to serve a mutual purpose. Yeah. And I mean, just reading that and listening to that, could you imagine if Congress, if Senate, if uh, all those people there <laughs> yes. lived by that, you yeah. know, that, that, that uncommon conflict, that would be amazing. Uh, you know, talk about yeah. Get, I don't know if I could swear, but talking yeah. about get shit done, that, that, would, that would get stuff done. That's, That's my, my favorite Sorry. congressperson, the person that gets shit done. You know, I, I would rank my Congress mm-hmm. people, and I'm not putting anybody else, but how many bipartisan bills have you passed? You know, like yeah. when, how right. often are you putting parties subordinate to getting shit done? And right. <laughs> if you're, if right. you're a, and, and me as a yeah. person that, that doesn't want to label myself with the party, you know, because I right. just don't want to label myself like that. I don't care what, the, what I just use that uncommon conflict to work together to get the things done that the people want, you know, right. just get it done. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, Stop wasted our time and money. Yeah. You know, I'm with you. Like I don't really align with the party and, and even if I did, I wouldn't because I align with people. I align with us. We're, we're a democratic Republic or you could say we're a public, you could say we're a democracy. The, it doesn't matter because all those words mean the same thing. It all means the power is with the people. And that means that we can choose to solve whatever problems we want to solve. We can provision whatever we want to provision. And so I don't need a party to tell me what I'm, what I'm supposed to believe. I know that, you know, we take care right. of folks that need taken care of. We, you know, we all pitch in in some way. So you don't need a party for that. What I need is, is our politicians, our policymakers to get out and go do their job, you know, and, and, and realize that you're right. You're right. You have to work together on these things. We had a conversation yesterday, and again, this is sort of political, but 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 I'm trying to make a bigger point here. I'm using politics to make yeah. a bigger point. If you are a sure. Republican senator and you talk about how there's you know 15 million people in your state, and you never represent the Democrats in that state. You're kind of a shitty senator, you know, <laughs> you, you're not. Oh, my not, God. Yeah. Right? You're not doing your job. You're not representing <laughs> your people. You're representing your party. And there right. are so many. And then problems to bring it down that, to a company. Right. Oh, go on. Sorry. No, I was going to say there are so many problems that, that are, are party agnostic. 
You know, like we all agree that homelessness is a problem here in California. We all agree with that. Florida, same thing. You guys have a ton of homeless people. You know, that is not a Republican Party problem. That is not a Democratic Party. It's a human problem. And we should be, if we can't solve that problem, then let's slow down and pick fewer problems to solve because it seems like we should be able to deal with that. Right. I mean, oh, my God. And we could put people on the moon. We could head towards Mars and we can't figure that out. We, we can. We we are capable, strong individuals right. that, could, that could accomplish anything that we set our goals in mind to. You know, mm-hmm. I truly believe that. And just bringing it down to a company. Could you imagine working for a company where they're like, ah, half of you, I don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Could you ma- or put it in like a McDonald's? Yeah. Half of you I don't care about. I wouldn't want to eat a hamburger out of that place. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree, you know, and and wonder why folks don't vote. Let's get out of the politic thing altogether, though, because that stuff is uh, <laughs> it's such a sticky trap. But it is a good illustration, and I, I love what you just said about the whole thing, where you know, if it was a company and only half of the company or only forty percent of the people had any kind of real representation, you'd be like, f this company, you know, and then productivity goes right. down. It's expensive. You know, that kind of that kind of lack of collaboration. Talk a little bit more about some of the you've got seven episodes. What moments stood out? Like what quotes besides um, uh, the, the CEO lady you mentioned earlier? What else stood out and really kind of got you to go? Damn, I didn't ex- like, like you just gave it to me. With the, if you take politics and put it into a company setting, it changes how you see it. And it becomes a lot more clear. What are some of those moments that you picked up along the way? Well, a lot of them really have been simple moments that I was um you know, sometimes you get smacked in the face with these simple things that you're that you just needed to put in your face again, right? So, like yeah. for instance, Jim Peter, um, you know, his creativity because I, I feel like, well, we're all creatives, right? It doesn't right. matter if you think that you can't draw or anything. Like everybody's creative, but you know, as a creative person, I really uh, attach myself to that of finding being in the moment, being present, and engaged, and then when you get that idea, don't let it go write it down, do whatever you have to do. Talk in your phone as a voice memo, record that idea that you have. Yeah. Because, and you, you know, as well as I do, as soon as that's gone and you move on to breaking leaves or doing something else, you're going to forget about it. It's never going to come back or it's possible. It'll never come back. So something simple as that, just mm-hmm. recording and journaling those moments while you're being present, engaged and reflecting on something that might become really creative and really inspiring for you or other people document it don't lose those 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 gifts yeah and we had another guy on the show a while back and i i love what he said he gave me a different perspective that I've, i find useful all the time his name is matt mosler and he's he's a professional ski bum you know and that sort of undersells what he does but but he he says you know collect joy go out and let nature give you awe and wonder you know and it's like right well damn nothing about that sounds bad i mean i've got to go outside that's good for me. You know, like it's like so many things about that make perfect sense. And then I always like to talk about like when, when you talk to people and you ask them, when was the last time you were pissed and angry? They always have immediate examples. And it was within minutes of the time we were talking, you know, <laughs> yep, like you said, when yep. was the last time you had unbridled joy, like uncontrolled arms in the air, like, yes. Oh my God. When was that? And they have to stop and they really have to think. And it's not within the last 12 hours, you know, that right. balance right. should be changed. <laughs> oh, totally. It's totally changed. And think about how your daily life would be if you were living into what you were meant to be, right? Mm-hmm. Every day you'd be waking up. You know, um, Tom Carmazzi, our old CEO, he said something, you know, thank God it's Monday. Like that kind of feeling. We're not like, oh, man, it's Monday. I got to get to work. You're like happy and you're jumping out yeah. of bed to run to work or do whatever it is that you do, ski, whatever it is that you're truly enjoying and living um, how awesome is that? You know? Yeah. And then when you ask that question to that person, when's the last time you did something happy? I'll say today. <laughs> exactly. Today. And if you don't, what if you were able to create that moment for someone? We, we have this, this character that we do around here. His name is Solomon and he's very angry, but he's full of love. He sound, he's like a dog. You know, dogs sometimes are so happy to see you, but they only know bark, 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 bark. You know, like you're like, ah, oh, I think you're happy to see me, but I'm not convinced. He's sort of like that. <laughs> and uh, we took John Tesh's rule that hugs should last 20 seconds and decided, like, oh, geez. <laughs> you know, and we're like, Listen, motherfucker, you better hug somebody every day. <laughs> 20 seconds, 20 pounds of pressure all around. 
2020 in 2020 <laughs> every day. But you know, if you did, if you really did go hug someone, and you know, because we know through science that hugging actually makes you feel better. Weird. If you hug someone sure. really well, and you were the best hugger in the office, and you gave those hugs out all the time, first off, you'd be a hugging motherfucker, and second, people, <laughs> you would be a joy to be around. You know. Oh my god! Yeah. We have a guy named Gus that, that uh, uh, now. So I'm on the other side of that, right? And by, real, real quick about the anger. Yeah. Most angry people that I've met that that characterize like you you characterize Solomon. You said the name. Yeah, yeah, Solomon? yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have more love to give than most. Right. And it's it's hidden behind that. You know, they're yeah, very yeah. caring individuals. <laughs> um, that's why they're probably angry most of the time. But back to, back to so we have Gus, and I'm not. I'm, Unless I'm, uh, you're in my like circle, you know, and one of the boys or girl, you know, the, the, that's where you get and get the hugs, right? Yeah. But we have this guy Gus, and he loves to give hugs, like you said, right? And I'm not one that, you know, I'm outside my circle, like, don't don't touch me, you know. But at first it was like that, and then the second time it was like that, and the third time, and then I got <laughs> to know Gus and know who the person is, and that he's a loving, caring, awesome human being. Yeah. And now when I see him. I want that. I, it's like a, I want that hug. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's, hugs are contagious hug is the gateway drug to love <laughs> it is it is, it is. Give, give, give past that uh, whatever phobia it might be um, yeah well that's fear right just that comfortable it's just fear. you're afraid of a hug it is. <laughs> yeah <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah man I, I love it I love what you guys are doing I love that that uh, yeah, the company Appreciate is it. behind this because it's, it's just it's so atypical for a company to, to do something like this. It's it's common for them to say it, but here you guys are, you're not just walking the walk, you're funding the walk. And you know, again, everybody I've talked to from Tut Hill is just like, hey, I love it there. I'm never gonna quit. I'm in a great environment, you know, and then if I do quit, it's because we all agreed that this is the other thing that I should be doing next. How about a company that's like, yeah, we want to help you do the next thing. What? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, what do we need to know about season two? And and, and go ahead. uh, Real quick on that though, because you you sparked something I really want to lay out there. Is so we're not perfect by any means, though. We have people that are not on a journey or not on on want to be on a journey. There, it's not like a hundred percent of the company. There's people that um, um, are still doubtful, and that's okay. And that's I don't blame them at all. But what if they are listening and want to do this? I would say just give that trust and give it a chance. And say yes to what what we're up to. You know what I mean? Because it, it it is we're all on this journey, and by working together and being together and building that uncommon conflict and uncommon trust together, it could be awesome. You know what I mean? I have to say that. So for season two, it's Japan. It's heading out, like I said, a customer, a, an employee. We'd like to spotlight possibly an employee too. Um, let me get my notes here, so I'm not screwing anything up. Uh, what else was on there? Yeah, an employee. Um, Jay Tuthill will be uh-huh. our last episode of this next season. So I can't tell you what he's going to talk about because I don't think that's been flushed out. I know there's a new model that he's working on yeah. regarding aliveness and that could come out there. I'm um, going to be touching on that recipe, I'm sure, too. But he'll be our last episode of, of this uh, year. Um, and we're trying to get like, you ever hear of Ron Finley? Nope, he's never heard of him. Urban Gardner. I've heard of Steve Finley. He's a Saluki. He, He's, no, I don't, I don't know. He's a baseball player, <laughs> and he, well, he went to Southern Illinois. Oh. That's all. I had. That's my family oh, okay. for you. Sorry. Good. Please continue. <laughs> all right. He's an urban gardener out in L.A., uh-huh. and okay. what he does is he finds these spaces that aren't used or underdeveloped or anything like that, and he puts gardens there where people could plant food, nice. um, tomatoes, things like that, and people in the community, and then they could feed, you know, eat off that or share off that, and it's just building a community, right? So we, we'd love to get him. He's on our scope to try to get this year. Um yeah, so that's about five to seven episodes. We also have people that we filmed already from last year, right? Um, that we might try to fit in. Now, I'm not only the creator director; I'm also the editor. So I got a lot of oh boy of trying to get these episodes out. <laughs> that's why you, you've only seen seven last year. It's well, a I'm lot of work. You, I'm working do, on this project all called the, the Prison Chronicles, and I thought it was going to come out last Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's like it's a lot of work it's so much work <laughs> and as soon as you get through part of it you go back and you listen and you're like i suck at this work i gotta go you know and you're always polishing and polishing and 
I'm not a perfection oh guy. I got to get things out, but it's just, it's a lot of work. So I, I can appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate why you guys are doing it. And I just, you know, I, I love, I love the Tuthill mission, man. I, I love that you guys are out there. You certainly don't have to do it. And that's why I love it even more is you're taking something that is not cheap. It takes a lot of time and is nothing to do with manufacturing. And yet has everything to do with who you are as a company and you're a manufacturing company. I love it, man. I love it. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. I'm going to let you ask me that. a couple Thank of questions you. now. I mean, you've, you've been on the road. You guys have done the interviews. You know, you've seen Chad do his magic. What do you want to ask me? What is it that you, so you said you serve others, you do as much charity as you can, but what is it that um, um, every day that you could do that would uh, feed that aliveness within you? You know, the thing that I try to do is I, I try to do several things. I try to feed my brain. I try to feed my body. I try to get my main tasks done. Every day a show goes out five days a week, right? Bam, bam, bam. So I'm always doing those basic things. And those things in and of themselves are powerful generators of aliveness. But then I'm always sprinkling things in like charity, uh, supporting another another author or supporting a person with their project. And I wouldn't call that charity. Like that's just like service to my community in general. So those are the things that I focus on. And, and obviously, you know, trying to maintain my relationship and, and, you know, with my daughter and my girlfriend. And that's it. Like that's a full plate. But it's a, it's a plate filled with creating value, not just for myself, but for others. Right. Now, look at that. So the reason I asked you that certain question is now if you take those five things that we talked about, right? Yeah. Connection, belonging uh, truly shows up in that, right? With yeah. your daughter, your family and, and you talking with me today, you're connecting people, right? Yeah. That's, that's, and you're really strong on there, right? Present engaged. You say you took the time, you want to take the time to feed your, your body and your, in your mind, right? That yeah. shows up in energy and in present being present engaged. You're truly an authentic person, which I could tell. Like I said, I have a big BS meter, and just talking on the phone, I could tell you're an authentic guy. Nice. I mean, that shows up in being that present, and getting engaged, um, full realm of emotions, right? Yeah. That, that, that do you embrace all those? Do you embrace those sad times, not just the happy times? Do, yeah. you, do you look into those sad times, those bad moments, finding not just the good and the bad, but learning from that of why it could be sad and what opportunities might, if you feel that way, that could come out of those right that's yeah. that emotional awareness piece dude how often do you do that i mean look I've, I've got a podcast where i talk to people i cry for a variety of reasons at least once a week on the show you know i've got to hold it together i can't have a full-blown cry but you know i uh joy hey. pride obviously sadness you know so many reasons for me to well up and uh and that, yeah. that bears itself out in the movie theater you, you know if there's an emotional moment there's a good chance that i'm welled up over there trying not to cry too much <laughs> you know i don't want to get right? boo hoo and one watching that, a movie you know <laughs> right right but any man that says that you're you're a sissy for crying is a sissy themselves that's yeah. all i have to say about that everybody everybody needs a good cry yeah everybody. Yeah. I, yeah absolutely I, hold, I, I hold it holding those back and out yeah no, yeah, yeah. I don't right. have to hold them back. And I'm, you know, anybody that wants to challenge my manliness is welcome to go, you know, grab the rucksack walk right next to me. You know, <laughs> I, I don't worry about that stuff anymore. But you're right. Like having emotions, all of them is fine, especially because sometimes shitty emotions, you know, you don't get them often, but you get better at dealing with it and understand that, you know, happiness is wonderful when it happens, but it's temporary. Something's going to replace that. Same thing with grinding sorrow where you're just like, I can't bear this. Right. You can, and it's, it's temporary, and you'll get another emotion soon, you know? So you, the more, you know, it's like those hugs. I'm not saying you need to go out and find right. sorrow all the time, but the more often it happens, the better you get at dealing with it. Right, and it's when those uh, those emotions occur is don't let them go. Right. Look, look into them and see what's there for you, you know? Yeah. Um, and then last, that, yeah. the last piece after I asked you that, that first question was um, – came out as purpose right you right. seem like a purpose-driven person so uh thanks for answering that and and you know in, in my view as well i'm going around looking at this you're living a pretty alive life i mean there's always opportunity to grow but just hearing yeah. from you and what you're driven to do and, and the way you're speaking with people i i, I salute you man uh, well thanks and i salute you guys we're sitting there saluting each other hey up 
render arm or arms. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's great. Everybody should go check out the work. Obviously, if you want to work with this fantastic company, again, not an infomercial, just a, I just love what they do. You can go to Tut Hill and apply for a job there. But it's the search for aliveness. You can find them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, also at searchforaliveness.com. And, and these are really neat. It's a new, neat web series, and hopefully you'll get something out of it. Everything we've talked about is stuff that I want more of, and I'm already think I'm already trying to do it, but I know better. I know I can do more. So, right. Vito, thanks for Always coming more. on. Thanks for spending the time. That's an easy hour, right? Yeah, it was an easy hour. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Thank you.